All right, fantastic. So our next talk, we'll be hearing from uh, Alec Wang, who is an associate scientist with tenure in the Department of Marine Chemistry and Geochemistry at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Let's see Alec's video. Hi, my name is Alec Wang. I'm a associate scientist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I would like to thank the organizing committee for this great opportunity. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge my student, Mallory Ringham, who has done a uh, lion's share of the work here. Um, our institute sensor system is called a channelized optical system or channels. It's for uh, high resolution measurements of seawater CO2 parameters. The marine carbonate system plays an important role in marine carbon cycle. As the CO2 concentration increases in the atmosphere, it causes ocean acidification and the changes of marine carbon cycle. These changes also have detrimental impacts on the marine biology and the ecology. To resolve the seawater CO2 system, we need to measure at least the two of the four measurable CO2 parameters. And oftentimes, DAC is preferred because it will introduce a less calculation error when you try to resolve the CO2 system from two measured parameters. From the beginning, our department strategy has been simultaneous and in situ. So far, we have been able to achieve a simultaneous measurement of pH and DAC pair or PCO2 DAC pair to fully resolve the system. We also develop a dynamic CO2 equilibration method which allow us to make high frequency measurements up to one hertz. This is particularly useful for hydrolution mapping on mobile platforms. Because all of the parameters we measure are based on spectrometric principles, uh, we can make the system more modular and compact. So the first version of the channels we developed uh, a few years ago, uh, it was designed for a stationary uh, platform uh, such as moorings and buoys. It has been deployed in coastal water to study coastal carbon cycles and exports of uh, carbon from soil marshes. It has achieved a fairly good uh, accuracy and uh, precision. Since then, we have been uh, developing channels too. Uh, the new sensor is faster and smaller. It can be deployed on mobile platforms such as ROV and profilers up to 2,000 meters. We also add the capability for measurement of PCO2. So last year we deployed the Channels 2 sensor on ROV Global Explorer of the West Florida Shelf. Uh, the goal of the project is to uh, study the fine scale physical biogeochemical environment uh, over deep coral reefs. Uh, we are particularly interested in small or fine scale changes of carbon chemistry surrounding the deep coral environment. Uh, our uh, hypothesis is uh, the fine scale uh, variability of carbon chemistry may be uh, related to the distribution of deep coral communities. We are pretty excited about this new deployment because uh, we'll be able to obtain the first ever high resolution DAC profiles in the ocean using an in situ sensor. So on the left, uh, lower left, you see the temperature profiles over a deep coral mountain. Uh, on the right are the DAC profiles. Over short distance, uh, hundreds of meters, you can identify large DAC concentration changes. This is important because it demonstrates that uh, deep corals uh, does uh, experience a fine scale changes of carbon chemistry surrounding them. So the next step is to try to identify whether this uh, fine scale changes of carbon chemistry uh, may be related to the distribution or the physiology of deep coral community. So looking ahead, we plan to add another channel for measurement of alkalinity. 
We're also looking for opportunities to commercialize the channel's technology. Uh, we always welcome new collaborations and more deployments. If you're interested, please contact me. Thank you for your attention. You know, channels too. Uh, mm -hmm. So last year we be able to. I mean, the second version basically is a much smaller and quicker. So we uh, targeted for uh, mobile platforms. Uh, so we be able to deploy the channels too on the ROV last year uh, over uh, deep coral environments. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, the depth is about a few hundred meters to a thousand meter uh, range of the Florida shelf. Uh, so we'll be able to obtain few high resolution uh, DIC profiles. Uh, as far as we know, that's kind of the first uh, ever DIC profiles they're using uh, in situ sensors. Uh, so we're pretty excited about it. And then we'll be able to find, uh, you know, very fine scales of uh, DIC uh, changes over uh, just a few hundred meters uh, range. So that actually linked to a very important uh, scientific question over, uh, you know, deep coral ecology which is why uh, in, in some places uh, deep corals are living uh, pretty well, but uh, next to it, it uh, may not be very well. Uh, is there something related to the carbon chemistry or other small scale uh, changes? Uh, uh, so uh, so that, that is the kind of the first, uh, that's pretty much how, you know, the second half. So moving forward, a couple of things is just, we're gonna add uh, alkalinity sensor, I mean, a channel to it. Uh, and then we're trying to commercialize the, the channel's technology. So that's great. About it. Thank you so much, Alec. Um, and apologies again for the technical difficulties here.